Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Here at Deep Adventure Ministries, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God is wild. I mean, didn't he, isn't he the one that made the wilderness? Uh, you can expect God to call you and to challenge you and to mobilize you to a great adventure. Our guest today, Heather Makowix, and I are going to talk about some of her peak encounters as she's an adventure guide leading people into the into the wilderness and also uh, into encounters with God. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, the Lord's really made it super clear to me in the last couple of days through some, through him speaking in, you know, a sense of the Lord's will. And then uh, my son the other day, uh, yesterday, coming in and just randomly bringing this up. The Lord began to speak to me about the mama bears out there. You know, we have probably more followers that are women than are men, and it's the women, when Cindy and I go to different conferences, it's the women that will push the men out of the way and go, oh, I'm so happy you've got this ministry. It's something we can finally, we can finally reach our men in a way that's gritty and real and that they can relate to. Uh, and then, and so the Lord began to speak to me about reaching out to the mama bears and, and to give them a quiver of arrows to help them participate in our ministry, to help bring men to the ministry and, and closer to the Lord. Now, women love our, 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 our work just for themselves, our Ocean Sunrise Catechism, our radio shows, our TV shows, the women really dig on it. But the next layer of that is, oh my gosh, this is something maybe my husband or my son or my brother-in-law can relate to. And we want to re recruit you into that army of mama bears. So we began to think about that yesterday morning, Cindy and I. And then uh, last night, my son Jeremiah comes into the room and he goes, Dad, remember Montana when we'd have those... Uh, the, you know, the fierceness of the mama bears in Montana, how uh, you didn't want to mess with them. That's when we, we mean by mama bears. I'm not talking about the mama bear from the good old Goldilocks story. Uh, this morning I was talking to my father. He and I both had cabins about five miles apart on the north, uh, north, uh, uh, on the north fork of the Flathead River. Glacier Park was two miles from my cabin. I could see the glacier peaks in the distance. And, uh, my cabin was actually built on a grizzly corridor. They like the little berries on the ridgeline where I had built my cabin. And there's stories uh, of grizzlies and stories of black bears and brown bears. But the story that people tell the most is about the mama bear and how you don't mess with them. Uh, I remember once uh, driving along and I saw a, a mama bear crossing the road in front of me and looking back and two little cubs just maybe four-month-old cubs chasing behind her and looking back to see what's this strange car. It's really cute. But I was talking to my dad this morning, and he was telling me about, and he was reminding me of when he was out in the deep woods, which is where you want to be with the Lord, right? You want to be deep with the Lord. He was hunting, and he came across this fallen log, and this mama bear came across that log with two cubs, and he, and he thought, oh, no, I've at the wrong place at the wrong time. She stood up, started snapping her jowls as grizzlies like to do. And my dad uh, didn't turn and run. That's the last thing you want to do. He's six foot four. He got low and humble and gradually backed away and got back to his truck. He had a rifle with him, so he knew if, if, the, if, the, if the bear charged, maybe he would be lucky enough to bring that bear down. But um, when he got to the truck, he unloaded his rifle and realized there was no bullet there was no bullets left. So he would have been in a, hurt, in a world of trouble. So we want to talk today to the mama bears. You know, I think of uh, Ace Bagley, the president of Knights on Bikes, and his wife, Lori, who she rides her own trike, you know, those, those three real wheel motorcycles. And she has endurance. They ride uh, long, long rides. I've been with them. And she's just loving life, and she, but she's tough. I call my wife TC. That's short for tough chick. You know, she used to be a rodeo rider. She, I lift her in the air when we tandem surf. She's graceful and beautiful. 
just very graceful, but she's tough. Don't you know she she is built for um, for fortitude and courage. And I think of the women in in uh, nights on bikes, all the women that ride on the back of their bikes with their men, like my wife likes to do with me. And then there's the the women of the Catholic Motorcycle Ministries, uh, just just uh, really powerful, graceful, beautiful women. But you don't want to mess with them if you're the enemy. You do not want to mess with them. So. I want to talk today with Heather Makowick. She's a spiritual director, and most of her ministry is through her, her organization called Peak Encounters, where she takes people out into wilderness areas uh, on hikes, and, and they go deeper with the Lord. And so I want to talk about this army of mama bears. We want to invite you to deepadventure.com. Subscribe to our newsletter, because real soon, if not by the time you subscribe, we are going to have a quiver of arrows for you, mama bears that you can utilize to reach brothers, sons, brother-in-laws, uncles, uh, your husbands, and other men in your life. We're going to give you the tools to bring them to a deep, to a bear encounter, <laughs> as we say, you know, we say uh, uh, in uh, the books written about the bears in Glacier Park. We're going to give, give them a deep encounter with the Lord if you'll help us out. Okay, Mama Bears, so go to, go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter and get ready because we, uh, we really believe God's going to utilize you in, in reaching men. Heather Makowix, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bear, so much. To Just great to see you again and to be able to share some stories and uh, just hear, hear where this goes. The Holy Spirit's leading today. You know, life is a story, isn't it? For sure, yes. We can so much echo what goes on on the outside if we're inviting God to tell us how he's speaking to us on the inside. You know, it's like the, the in The Hobbit, I forget, the, for, I forget <laughs> the guy's name, he said, I wonder what kind of adventure we're on. Yes. You know, the, the pedagogy <laughs> of the whole world, the pedagogy of our individual lives, God has us on an adventure. Yes, he does. So give us a little bit of your story before we dig deeper. I know you're a spiritual director. What does that mean, by the way? The spiritual director is really someone that's accompanying and walking with someone uh, an individual, sometimes small groups, uh, as they seek to grow closer to God. And it can look like a lot of different ways. Maybe someone's coming to us because they're in the transition of, of their life. Maybe they graduated from college and are looking for a career. Perhaps they're wanting to get married, but they're not sure yet, so they need someone to help discern with them. And sometimes they're struggling with the identity of who God is anyway and how he's related to them in their lives. So we really create that space by the power of the Holy Spirit to invite them to share their stories right where they are, knowing that it's not an aimless direction that we're taking them to, but the idea is that we're accompanying them and inviting them to explore how their relationship will enliven and enrich towards God. So it's an accompaniment, but it's not. A, uh, we're not meandering. You, you're, the, the idea is to help discern God's direction in their life too, and what the meaning of what's been happening in their lives can be for them. Yes, you're correct, Bear. That yes, we reverence the dignity of the the person that's in front of us, but we also want to invite them lovingly to grow deeper in an encounter with God uh, versus just going wherever you want. When you think about loving someone as a parent you listen maybe they ha they've made mistakes you're listening to them lovingly and compassionately but as a parent we also have an obligation to keep them from danger i think what you were talking about with mama bear well there are hard boundaries too and how can we invite them into that in such a way that's engaging attractive and uh helping to manifest jesus in a real way so your, your, your ministry is called Peak Encounters. And yes. I know one of the things that you do is you bring people out into, into uh, you know, you, hike, you take groups and individuals out, out hiking. What's the, what's the draw to nature? Why do we have, what is, the, what is the reason you do that? Well, since I was a little girl, I've always loved being outside. And I feel like I could be my most authentic person, most creative person when I'm outside, whether it's climbing, hiking, observing wildlife which just takes me outside of myself um, when i'm out in nature it, it reminds me that my life is not all about me but 
a power greater than myself. And for me, the power greater than myself is God. So it's just, it's the, it's the portal of entry that I relate to most with engaging with God. You think about it, there's the Thomas Aquinas, uh, who I love, and, 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 and it's kind of a, almost that, that the world of the mind, the seeking truth in that way. And then there's the St. Francis, and that's the thing about the, at the Catholic Church. It's, it's not either or, it's both and. You know, which, which of these, but, but nature really uh, is, uh, some people say, people say it's the fifth gospel. You know, that nature yes, speaks to us. Natural laws, Thomas Aquinas would say. And since you were talking about Thomas Aquinas, I love how he taught. He would teach with an evocative method of question. So marrying the two, the evocative method of question, out in beauty, such as natural creation, to me it just doesn't get more ideal than that. Yeah, uh, creation is evocative. Yes. You know, um, the, the, when, you, when you see the stars, the sun, and the moon, it automatically lets you, talk, speaks to you of your own smallness in the sense uh not that we don't have uh, infinite dignity because we have a uh, jesus the infinite god became man but but it lets you know that hey there's something out there beyond my me and uh i wonder what's on the other side of the sky you know am i am i what what happens when i die and all those sorts of things come to you when you're when you're out in the wild we're talking with heather Makowicz. what's the, what's your website again heather www.peakencounter.org. Peakencounter.org. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you mama bears to go to deepadventure.com and uh, get our newsletter because we're about to make some announcements. We just feel like the Lord's really spoken to us about recruiting this army of mama bears to go to war with us to help. Uh, we're going to give you a, a quiver of arrows. We're going to give you an arsenal that you can use to help uh, reach the men in your life that you really care and, and love about love. So we'll be right back. This is Bear with a Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. We want to invite the men that are listening to go to deepadventure.com, become a member of Bear's Man Cave. You know, Bear's Man Cave is a place for a bunch of knuckled riggers and misfits to show up. We're, we always say that we're all bozos on the same bus. People think, well, if I'm going to be spiritual, I can't hang out with a bunch of real, if I want to go deeper with the Lord, I don't want to hang out with real spiritual people. I'm, I'm not like them yet. i got to get my act together before I get there. But it's a come-as-you-are party. You're welcome to the Man Cave. You know, you're thinking about, King David, when he was on the run from King Saul, and he hid out in the cave of Adullam. And then one by one, the stragglers started, started showing up, the, the misfits, people that owed money, maybe some people that were running from the law. You had all kinds of people showing up at that cave. Eventually, God made them into the great warriors uh, that fought 
alongside King David. And that's what we see helping, hap, happening at the, at the man cave. We have men show up. We share our challenges. You know, we realize, you know, we all, we all have, uh, you know, we feel, some men feel so ashamed. I got this issue. I got that issue. And they show up there and they go, oh, I guess I'm not alone. But our, our, our job is to encourage and challenge and mobilize each other to, to uh, a virtuous life and then to uh, help us to begin to lead our families and to reach out to other people. So come to the Man Cave. We have a Zoom video chat every three or four months. We've been every two or three weeks, I should say. We've been doing that for several years. And then we have a, a, a secret Facebook group that you can't join. You've got to go to our website to join deep at deepadventure.com. But we have great, uh, great conversation and great prayer. We have one of the gentlemen leads a rosary every night live on Facebook for our for our ministry. So join the man cave, deepadventure.com. We have with us uh, Heather Makowicz today. Her ministry is peakencounter.org is her website. What does it mean? What do you think of, what do you think it means to be a mama bear? Tell us what, what comes to your mind. Have you ever encountered a, have you ever encountered a bear out in the wild? Yes, and I'm so excited that you are sharing this with me. Um, yes, I have. When I was out in Colorado when we first moved out there, I remember us going to Cheyenne Mountain Zoo my husband and I, and we just love the topography. It's on the side of a mountain. It's very natural. And as we're coming down from the giraffes, we see these cute cubs in the middle of the road. And first of all, I've never seen cubs at all. And I thought they were part of the exhibit. <laughs> and I noticed <laughs> there, was, there was no fence. And I'm, I'm going, oh my gosh, Dave, what are we doing? And, and he said, Heather, just back away. And I'm like, no, but they're so cute. He goes, no, because if they're that close to us, mama's not far behind. And sure enough, as we start backing away, mama bear does that sound, that, that grunting sound. She starts clapping, I think, like you were talking about. And, and I was like, what the heck is that? And Dave reminded me that that's mama bear intimidating us so that we can back away and she can protect her cubs. So that was an awesome description that you gave bear earlier on. Yeah. In terms of being a mama bear, mm. I think about uh, the fact that we try to raise our kids with as many quivers as you would say in their in the, as, what do you as call many it? arrows in their quiver as many arrows in their quiver yeah got it backwards sorry <laughs> and and so we raise them up in the faith we help them to become formed we connect them with good people good mentors and and yet then they are launched off into society and we hope and pray that they will make those choices that they've learned and been formed in and so I think as a mama bear, we're supposed to be doing our job to step up to the plate and be active in their lives, in the fun things they like to do, get to know their friends so that you're, you know, what's making them tick. Um, and, and I just think it's important to, to just be super involved. Um, so, what, what, and, and also to challenge them, to mm. challenge them. Um, what do, you, what do you say to the women there that who, uh, because so often I say women are kind of like kindling. They, <laughs> they, they start on fire very quickly for the Lord. They have this great yes. luminous, you know, this, the spirituality. Yeah. But the men are kind of like oaks. Takes them a long time <laughs> to start burning. You know, it may take a lot of kindling to start yeah. burning. But once a man starts to burn, it's yes. like a deep, hot fire that you can't put out. So oh my goodness, what yeah. do we say to the women out there, the mama bears out there that have a husband or a son or someone in their lives that um, they can't, they're, they, they want to see get on fire for the Lord? How, well, do, how does that kindling go to work? Don't give up. Don't give mm. up. They, mm. will come, they will come to the Lord by your example first. And if they see that it's very attractive and fun and joyful and engaging and they see you on fire, well, why wouldn't they want to be too? So I've noticed through the years that it's less talking and more action. It's more being that authentic witness to them. And that doesn't mean that I am always that way. And when I'm wrong and when I'm screwing up, I have to go to the Lord to help humble me to apologize for those places where Maybe I haven't been the best role model or the best Christian. 
so that there's this sense that it's not a hypocritical thing that I'm supposed to be this way, but yet I'm this way. How can I bridge the gap to say, will you forgive me in this area? So you would not? actually you would actually go to a child and say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Yes. I think it's very important because they are going to learn by example. And if we can humble ourselves to say, yeah, I was I was wrong in this or wow, I actually didn't pay attention. I was doing my work and I should have heard what you said. Maybe I should have taken the time to stop what I was doing. But somehow my work became more important than being with you, which should be most important. Do you have stories in your life where you've seen women that saying, how am I going to get my husband more involved and and uh, you know I just seen you know the, the oh I guess I guess maybe you should pray the rosary for him and it seems like a defeatist last resort the reality is that's the great weapon all of us carry but I think especially women is is um, is to you said don't give up you know carry on press on the fortitude in prayer is yes. is amazing to pray the rosary for your for your your sons mm-hmm. your your husbands and the people in your life for a woman it's 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 you want to have an arrow in your quiver that's definitely one of them you know i agree a hundred percent um each decade of the rosary is for one of my family members but it always starts with my husband and our marriage because i know that the blessed mother does so that she unites us she supports us she is part of the holiest family so why wouldn't she want that for us and, and in terms of Barry, you asked the question about the frustration sometimes women can have with trying to bring their men around with faith. I had a wise friend once tell me, don't start with inviting them to the things of faith. First, pray and intercede. Secondly, join with them with stuff they like to do. And I know I'm going to maybe sound a little um, controversial here, but my husband likes to shoot. So we'll go out to the range and and shoot together. It's not my favorite thing to do. It scares me, but it's a way that uh, breaks ground for us to meet. That I'm able to meet him where he is. Yeah. First. That's so cool because a lot of women would just outright reject that, but you're kind of going right into the center of his mana, as we say in Hawaii. You know that manly part of him to go shoot guns. You know, I remember uh, <laughs> as a young child going hunting with my mother and father uh, with bows. And uh, I was probably five or six years old. My mother was so good at walking quietly through the woods, the deep woods, and she had a recurve bow, a beautiful recurve bow. And, um, and there was a stealthiness about her. And there was the ability to be patient and to wait. And I think that's, that's part of the, the role of the woman is to, the role of the, 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 the w- women, we need you. We need your prayers. Men need your stealthiness, <laughs> if I can say, uh, and, and your prayers. I mean, like going to the gun range with your husband, you know, is a very is kind of a stealthy thing. It says, "I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you and, and I'm gonna accompany you," in the hopes that you know through that something can happen. But the the uh, taking your husband to the Lord, your sons to the Lord in prayer, is very mm-hmm. stealthy. You know, and my mother, she was patient, she had fortitude, uh, and, and in, in that quietness in the deep woods, so to speak, in that quietness in your prayer time, mountains will be moved. And we men, we need our women to pray for us. I remember when my mom first had her encounter with the Lord back uh, in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal days. Uh, she had a beautiful encounter with the Lord, and uh, when she would come home, my dad could see something had changed, and he would get upset. And then one, I, one time I heard, heard him uh, be me, yell at her, kind of, not quite yell at her, but she, he had said something, and you're just reading the Bible or something. And then she went to, the be- to their bedroom, and I heard him yell, and I know what you're doing in there. You're praying. <laughs> you're praying. You know, just stop it. But that was it. And then my dad, within weeks, had an incredible encounter with the Lord. So women, you are kindling. Uh, God's given you a special, special role when it comes to men in your lives. Your prayers are the kindling to these big oaks that take a lot more effort to to set on fire. Uh, so don't think, oh, I guess all I can do, nothing seems to work, all I can do is pray the rosary. Well, what what more powerful thing could you be doing? You're the saint uh, 
Monica's, you know, and 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 your the men in your life are the Saint Augustines. So stand strong, ba- uh, Mama Bears, and we want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, where we're re- recruiting Mama Bears to help us in our effort to engage men. So go there, subscribe to our newsletter. You begin to find out what we're what we're up to and how we need your help. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Hey, you guys, um, I have Heather McAwix on our on my radio show, people going, oh, I thought this show was for men. Actually, you know what the reality is? When I first received the vision for the show, it was like, focus on the grittiness and reality that men can identify to, and the women will be there. The women are already on fire for the Lord, so many of them, and they love the, 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 the straight-out truth and the grittiness of what we say. Um, and so that my focus is always men, 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 but it's actually the women. We have more women that love the show than we have men. And so we've been inviting you um, women, we're going to engage you more and more in the ministry to help help with our outreach, give you some tools that you can use. So go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our email because really quickly we're going to have some great tools for you, if not already by the time you by the time you go there. And we also want to say, do you know what Heather Makowicz? She's a she's a beautiful woman. She's she's she has a beautiful family. She has a beautiful heart. She has a beautiful library that I'm looking at. How do I know all that? Because, <laughs> because, because I don't see my book there. But how do I know that is because uh, Heather is on the YouTube channel. So you can go, uh, you can actually view this on YouTube too at the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. So you can go there and subscribe. And if you subscribe to our newsletter, you get this show actually a day before it airs on, on EWTN. So Heather, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. It was so cool the other day when we, uh, when you uh, interviewed, you were, you called to, Tell people what, why, why you and I had a Zoom meetup last time when you were kind of going to interview me. Tell me what, tell them what happened. Yeah, so I was seeking to find exciting stories about how God met them in adventurous outdoor, um, cre- well, creation outside. And I was like, I got to call up Bear because he has all these awesome surf stories and how does that echo back to the magnificence of God? So we're talking and I'm interviewing him and he was prompted by the Holy Spirit to invite his son, Jeremiah, on and to share his story. And I just, I was listening to his story and there was something in my heart that was really bubbling up and I could really sense the Lord was doing something for Jeremiah. and. I just was feeling overflowed with with joy and and what came to me was speaking out something that i thought was a gift of his and that's the gift of teaching and i'm sure it comes on the shoulder of giants like his father and that i it's important for parents to really be the ones to help lift our kids up well, that's her way of saying that she no longer wants me to be in her sh- in her book. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, she Bear, wants my were, son to be in the book. <laughs> you were you were talking about your your book. I actually have it right next to me because I was right. looking at okay. it. Okay. No, I just <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but I, I know I, I interview people and they have all these books in the background. Mike Aquilina, uh, you know, go, hey, Mike, you got all the early church fathers. I don't rate. <laughs> But um, no, my, I, I was so when you when you began to tell me what your goal was of your book, I thought you got to talk to my son. He had just come back. I, th- I think he just gotten here the day before. He's he's still on quarantine today here in Hawaii. He's starting a, a new gig working with FEMA here, um, 
And uh, he's, it's so hard for him to share about that 85-foot wave that he mm. surfed. Um, first of all, you don't just talk about it for two seconds. You can't describe it. And secondly, he doesn't want to brag, right? It's not like something he would bring up. But when you be, and began to invite him to talk about surfing, one of the biggest waves ever ridden in the world, and then apply that as a personal testimony to people's lives. Um, you know, I, I interview people sometimes, and they're so humble that I can't even interview them. It's like, dude, this isn't the time to be humble. We're not even, we don't even care about you. <laughs> we want your personal witness. Tell us what, tell us about your personal encounter, you know, with, with Jesus. So do you, you, do you have a working title for this book yet? I don't, but I'm, I'm thinking that it will be something like Peak Encounter Adventures from the Outside In. That's awesome. And there's going to be 31 uh, witness stories. And in a sense, I will be a field guide taking them through these adventure experiences and inviting them to connect those stories with God's word. So, and I, you know, I'm just still waiting to see how it unfolds. And I'm super excited because I know that the Lord placed that on my heart with a lot of fire about three years ago, and I'm still well, What do you mean by that? How, how do people, ha what do you mean by that? You know, people who are, are, yeah. are now going, wanting to go deeper with the Lord, and you're, you're, you're sharing that the Lord actually initiated this in your heart, gave you this vision or this, this, this sense. How, how does God, how does that happen? Is it in prayer or does it just come yeah, on? Well, it's, it's prayer and then the instrument that God uses of other people. I had a deacon who once asked me, Heather, how do you evangelize? Because somehow people are feeling safe around you. They're, they're coming to ministry. Um, what is it that you do? Do you have a formula? And I'm like, no, I, I, I don't know. I just try to be myself. And um, I started to think about it and ask the Lord about it. How do I articulate this so that maybe other people can, you know, learn maybe i don't know something about how i mm. how i talk to people i don't even consider evangelization per se but it's just being myself and all of us have gifts and and for for me i just think about it as how can i witness by my own personal witness and my own story no one can debate our stories and our meeting with god because they're very unique and and if we can lead by a story first, it's the universal connection of our human experiences. We lead through beauty. We lead through ourselves. We lead through how it is that we meet God there. And so the portals of entry, we talk about all through natural creation, but the portal of entry is also through the diversity of the stories that we're hearing. And many need to be, um, invited to share their story. Maybe they've never had a context to share something because maybe they didn't think anybody cared or they were listening. So why not elevate that story? This is this is this is it. Uh, you know your your book is is a curiosity that you had to ha hear other people's story. And yeah. as a radio interviewer, I've kind of developed this curiosity right in more and more in people's lives. I've come to find out, Heather, that. Everyone's Rocky Balboa. Everybody, yes. Yes. everybody has a story. The woman in the pew that's in her late seventies and is praying the rosary, you know, before everyone else, go talk to her. <laughs> she has a story. The people that you think may have the most blandest or uninteresting lives, they're, we're all Rocky Balboa, but most people never get to tell their story. And God, God is a storyteller. You think about the whole history of 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 his his um, journey with the children of Israel, you know, and and our his uh, and Jesus coming to Earth, and, and the story stories that he told, the parables, and this mm -hmm. unfolding of his story of history. The, the the greatest, the best way to evangelize is to listen. To to and that and it's not even with the purpose of evangelization. It's like, it's like listen, ask people when they say something and they just kind of gloss over oh I went through a tough time a few a few years ago and then I was able to apply and get this other job well, what was that tough time about no one cares to listen to that 
but listen to their stories and you're going to learn a lot and then in doing that you you you've actually in, in in letting them rehearse their story to you that's the coming alongside that you talk about as a spiritual director yes that's so true and often uh, they will come to the conclusion about how God is working in their lives just by sharing their story because something about articulating our story brings the undercurrent, the subconsciousness um, of an experience to a conscious level. And it, it brings a concreteness to it, if that's a word. It's a great um, Catholic word. It actually is. is yeah. Okay. It's a great great Thank philosophical you. word. Yeah. <laughs> the concreteness. Okay. It makes it. It makes it real. And, yeah. Yeah. And, we're and meant people to, don't. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. People um, don't really want to necessarily hear what you have to say until they know you care. I've heard that thousands of times before, and not that it's a formulaic thing, but it is so true. I mean, don't you don't you think there that. When people really know that you care and you love them, then they're willing to open up and share with you authentically and vulnerably where they are. And then they begin to invite you for, and then one of the things that I do is I'll just say, I'll, I'll continue to ask questions. Yes. And it's not because, it's just because it's very interesting. You should, you should become, you should develop the habit of really being interested in other people. I, I go especially to that that the the eighty year old woman who's praying the rosary. Oh my gosh! If you could really hear her story, you'd be so humbled. And then uh, and then I often will, and if it's not an embarrassing situation for them, I'll say, you know, what, can I take a moment to pray with you? Mm -hmm. And when I when we pray, then suddenly the Holy Spirit just kind of opens up doors, right? And there's like yeah. there becomes almost a lifelong lifelong connection. They may never see you again. But there's like a lifelong connection because someone prayed. It's like if someone goes and gets a tattoo. That tattoo artist doesn't remember you, but you'll remember that tattoo artist forever. It's like when you take that moment to pray with someone, God shows up and stuff happens. And they forever have that kind of that moment in time when someone really cared to listen and prayed with me and God showed up. That's like a waypoint in their lives. Indeed, I think about even just the, the woman at the, do at the Dunkin' Donuts who just wanted to chat, and you ask her to pray, and she's taking her gloves off across the counter and saying, sure, I can use it, and all of a sudden, you know, her story oozes out, and she's open to receiving God's grace through that in a, in a healing way. It's so true. We're, you know, it is, we are all living a story. And we, we want to, sh we, you know, and we're not meant to live life in an isolated way. And so many people are so isolated. They may be with other family members, but no one really wants to hear their story. I mean, it's so funny when you're walking in, in Waikiki, especially, it's like running a gauntlet to walk from here to the ABC store. That's our local little, uh, it's not like a liquor store. It's, it's all blocks covered, we call it. Just to walk a few blocks is like running a gauntlet <laughs> because everyone is saying, aloha bear, aloha bear, you know. And it's because uh, each of them have, it's part of the aloha spirit too, but mm -hmm. when people say, how are you? They really mean it, you know? And so they want to they have that moment of how are you? What's really going on in your life? So we need to have that type of awareness. And in that, when you listen to someone else, you're going to learn how to listen to God too. We're talking mm -hmm. with Heather Makowick. She's Her ministry is peakencounter.org. She's one of the few people we've had on as a guest a second time. And so uh, we, we really value her testimony. <laughs> we'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've actually had... Uh, we have our, as our guest today, Heather Makowicz. Her uh, ministry is peakencounter.org. I've actually had some men get mad when I have a woman on my show. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it is so funny because why are you reaching out to women? This is supposed to be, you know, no man's land or something. You know, well, men, uh, you should try to learn to understand women. Maybe they, maybe it's good for us to have someone like Heather on the show who's going to open up and share with us her heart and help us to understand. And we re- we receive. Um, inspiration and challenge from every Christian, but also this this ministry was never meant to be just a ministry to men. It was like the Lord told me, if you if you if you have your target as men, uh, the collateral damage will be women. <laughs> in other words, in other words, aim at the heart of the men that so it's a real and gritty enough ministry, and the women will already be there and want to be and be part of it. So it was never that we didn't want to minister to women. My Ocean Sunrise Catechism and the radio show and the TV show, women love it. But we just knew that if our target was to uh, aim at the bullseye of a man's heart, that the women would be collateral damage, if that's the right way to say it. And so oh. we love to hear the stories of women. And that's why at Deep Adventure Ministries, we have a, a new movement that we're doing, and that is to arm our mama bears, give them uh, arrows in their quivers, so that they can um, uh, become part of our outreach to men, you know, uh, give them tools that they can use to, to draw men to a deeper walk with the Lord. So go to our women, mama bears, go to our adventure, deepadventure.com. There's nothing more fierce than a mama bear. So welcome back to the show, Heather. Can you tell us a couple stories of your, when you, you when you lead people into the wild, you have, nat- yes. you, you go into nature hikes, something yeah. that stands out in your mind. Well, this for one thing, uh, we, we've we gone ziplining and done a high ropes course. Um, and the story begins with Peter. So we talk about how Peter's walking on water and he was doubting that he couldn't swim and yet he knew that he had to go towards the Lord, but he had to struggle along the way to get there. and. So we have people go out and actually experience fear and step into Mm. the place of Peter and actualize that experience. So we're experientially infusing them with their senses and their activity to hopefully build muscle memory of that um, story. So they will never forget it. And after we finish um, having that experience, I love to hear the stories again. You well, what's the experience about. of zip lining? What's what's your most gnarly zip line you've done? Oh my gosh! Well, actually, my most gnarly zip line was going to Costa Rica, and we did an eighteen section um, zip. And the scariest part was jumping off of a hundred foot foot plank, and I didn't realize that was going to be part of it. And it was also a monsoon rainy day. So we were zipping really fast and my glove Mm. was so tight that I couldn't grip (laughs) the cables that well. Mm -hmm. So I would fly and my nickname became Muy Rapido Mama. (laughs) I was like, 
what? Why? And I find out at the end that I had the newest glove that they that was available. And I'm like, oh, great. No wonder I couldn't grip it too tight. So, <laughs> so I was like, I need to take people through something like this. We can't go to Costa Rica, but OK, let's go somewhere local to begin. Yeah, Costa and, Rica, the safety laws aren't as, as good either. <laughs> No, I know. And and if you don't speak fluent Spanish, I'm not always understanding what the instructions I, yeah, are. Yeah, I remember going on a, on, a, on, a, on a paraglide ride once and I didn't even know what was happening. You know, like a lot of Spanish coming at me and next thing you know, I'm strapped in and I don't know if I'm strapped in or not. So I'm holding on for dear life as they drag me behind this boat. And I can't tell if if I let go, am I going to fall forward and fall out? So for like two weeks, my whole chest muscles hurt from oh hanging God. out so much. And my wife, Cindy, you know, she's a... Uh, She's a flatlander from Florida. I think the first time she ever had to walk up a hill was in Costa Rica when she went zip lining. You know, <laughs> oh, but did she have fun? Did she like it? Oh yeah, she had fun. She's a skydiver too, you know. But there is oh. something about that experience of that leap. Yes. Yes. And that is that's the same way with God. You know, when I think Bear you talked about, well, deep adventure. When you go deep with God, it, there's no holds bar. You know, you go in and and you have to be radically real with him mm. wherever you are radically real and even even if it means that you're angry at him for something you're frustrated you're annoyed you're impatient with your spouse <laughs> um struggle with god wrestle with him about it that's what that's what people in scripture did so why not us so and it's usually from that experience that there's an insight that God is inviting you to. So I think you've ju you've just spoken to some people right now in a real direct way that are angry with God, yes. and um, you said that we should wrestle with them with with God, yes. and it reminds mm -hmm. me of Jacob wrestling with uh, the angel <laughs> of the Lord, who they say was a, um, a theophany of Jesus Christ that he was wrestling with, and he 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 he, he was grappling with God grappling through the night and then eventually the you know when you're losing a fight uh you know i'm trained in, trained a lot in martial arts when you when you lose when you're losing that's when you hang on to your opponent cuz his punches don't hurt so bad right you can't mm. you can't really wail on you when you when you when you you'll see boxers clinch that's what jacob did he was losing and it was so painful that what he did was he didn't turn and run he clinched and hung on for God, you know, hung on to God for dear life. And so you men and women out there right now, if you're feeling that you're at the bitter end, that uh, you've, been in a, you've been in a firefight, you've been struggling, and you feel like even God's abandoned you, turn and wrestle with, with him, grapple with him, and say, God, what are you doing wrong, you know? <laughs> and, and eventually you'll learn to say, God, I, I forgive you. You know, you hold all, you hold a grudge against God sometimes, and you learn to say, "God, I forgive you." But um, it's important to wrestle with God, because from that moment, in the middle of the night out in the desert, God changed His name from Jacob to Israel. But He also punched him right in the in the hip, <laughs> so that probably for the rest of his life he walked with a limp. In other words, he always hesitated to kind of check in with God before he took his next step. So yeah, this whole getting real with God. And wrestling with God, this isn't the time to run from God. This is the time to clinch and say, okay, you win. As hard as it is to serve you, it's harder not to. You get to, <laughs> not my way, Lord, but your way. And Barry, you know how you were talking about just through wrestling at the fatigue that you can feel. Mm. And it is often when we get to that bottom of the barrel where we are completely feeling powerless and we have a choice there. Do we give in to despair and say, okay, you win? Or do we actually say, Lord, this, I have no more power over this. I know in my human capacity, I can't move uh, past this situation. I have to give it to you because I'm at the end of my rope. And, and, and are you, th you know, the thing about it is God, it, not always. A lot of times, it's just our own stupidity. But the end of you know the end of the rope is actually a nautical term. Uh, when I used to sail my sail my boat alone because no one would want to sail with me, when I had my my twenty seven foot Catalina, not the biggest boat, but a wonderful boat, I always trailed a rope 
about a 100-foot rope behind the boat in case I fell out. And about every 10 feet, uh, sailors will put a knot. That, lo- that last knot is called the bitter end. And because if you miss that, you're not going to get back in your boat. And so if you feel like you're at the bitter end, um, this, is your, this is actually right where God wants you. Because it's at that point when you say, God, unless you save me, we perish, as you're referring to Peter. Uh, I know like it, in, when I've been held down by big waves, it's when I hit the bottom of the reef that I know I can push off. So if you feel like you've been wrestling with God and you're at the end of yourself, that's the place where you can hear God knocking. It's when you come to an end of yourself that you find Jesus. So respond, respond now to, to this moment with God. This, this is, this is the, a scary time. This is an encounter with God. Heather, can you lead people to a, to a prayer of abandonment to the Lord, people that are in that situation? Now we have about, about a minute or so. Sure. People who find themselves in that situation. Lord God, I just, we know that there are those places right now where we are in that temptation to spare our culture, our world, our our health. Lord Jesus, we invite you to come into those places and spaces in our hearts, in our spirits, in our land, in our families to do what you do best. Save us, heal us, restore us. Give us a sense of your glory through fun, through hope, through love in very, very practical ways. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And and Lord, bless each and every person who is watching this, listening to this today, that they may just know your glory and your presence. And we ask for all these things in Jesus' name. I'm remembered of the verse, who have I in heaven but thee, O God? And there's nothing on this earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail me, but you are the strength of my life and my portion forever. If you find yourself at the bitter end, if you find yourself at the end of yourself, God's right there. This is your moment. This is your sacred moment to, to, to turn, to abandon yourself to God and cling to, cling to the Lord. God will not abandon you. There's a scripture verse that also comes to my mind. My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. For the, for um, the the chosen one is proven in the furnace of much affliction. But fall into the hands of God and not into the hands of man. Uh, for what man has ever trusted in God and been left abandoned? So let go and let God. We're already way overboard. We got to go, Heather. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Visit uh, Heather's website, peakencounter.org. Or you can go to deepadventure.com, find out more about us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Ah. (laughs) Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.